Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today is all about authentic Hawaiian style teriyaki. Doesn't matter what protein you use, this one is gonna be good. As you guys know, there's very few recipes that I really take to heart. Most of my cooking is based off of either experiences or just having fun, right? There are certain emails or messages that come across that, hey, you're doing it wrong. Hey, this is not traditional. Hey, what about this? A guy reached out to me from the islands in Hawaii and said, just to let you know, your traditional style teriyaki is unrealistic. That's not how we make it. That's not the original route. That's not uh, respectful to our culture. And it set me back for a second. There are some stuff that we went back and forth with about my knowledge and his knowledge. And we both came to a gentleman's agreement that ultimately, although I knew about it, I did not mean any disrespect or never would I mean disrespect to any culture for any food recipe at all. All right, so after the emails back and forth, he kind of sent out one with a recipe involved. And this is where he kind of like stole my heart. This is where it really got my attention. You guys know I don't like recipes. I don't really cook with recipes. I cook with ideas and just hope it comes together just based off the building blocks, right? So this is what he said. You will notice I'm not giving you exact measurements. There's a reason for it. We don't measure. We let our heart lead you. Keep it simple. And I promise you, it will go a long way. And to me, that was powerful. That's, that's kind of like how my cooking philosophy revolves around. Like, what do you like to eat? What is it that drives you to make really good food? So with that, we're going to be making a recipe that he's given me. And I've scoured the earth to find traditional, authentic, incredible ingredients because I want to make authentic Hawaiian style. After doing my research, it doesn't look like there's one way to do it. There's a multiple ways of doing Hawaiian style teriyaki. This is the recipe that he gave me with a very small twist on my end. You guys ready? Yep. All right. First, we got flank steak. Beautiful cut of meat. We're going to be slicing that very, very thin. And this is the list of ingredients. We've got soy sauce. Um, he did say that if you use kinkaman soy sauce, that it is more powerful. And you can substitute the kinkaman soy sauce for a mixture of water and kinkaman. Since we found the actual soy sauce that he wanted to or wanted us to use, we're going to use that. We've got some mirin some sugar, some garlic, and ginger. All right, here we go. So basically it's a one to one ratio for soy sauce versus sugar, okay? So I'm gonna use one cup of soy sauce because I wanna save a little bit to serve on top. The mirin is half of that. One cup of sugar. We're gonna do, I like a little bit more garlic. So I'm gonna do two tablespoons of garlic and one tablespoon of ginger. Sometimes I use ginger root and just let it steep in the mix. Now, if you think it's a lot of sugar, or think it's too sweet, you just gotta remember what the traditional teriyaki that you would normally buy in the grocery store is. I think that's where the biggest offense came from was what is traditional versus what is manufactured, right? It kind of takes the love, the tradition, and the culture from the Hawaiian Islands and kind of steals it and puts it into other cultures. And I don't think they enjoyed that. Flat top's on. I'm just going to put it on top of the, the heat right now. How is it? Oh, damn. Is it good? Hell yeah. <gasps> oh, wow. Oh, wow. We might be only making our own teriyaki from now on. Boy, that's good. <laughs> all right. So while that marinade is just dissolving the sugars, that's all I'm doing. I'm not boiling it or anything like that. I'm just warming it up. Some of my ingredients were cold. So I'm just gonna take two green onions. Now this recipe can go along with uh, steak, chicken, shrimp, whatever you got. So we just got a beautiful flank steak, that's what he recommended. And so that's how we're gonna do it. So in my mind, it's all about uh, 
thin, small, tons of flavor, right? So not thick pieces. So we're gonna cut this in thirds. The grain's running this way, so we're gonna cut against the grain. You're almost making like jerky style, a little bit thicker than jerky. All right, that's a lot of steak. Now that that steak's cut up, we're just gonna throw it in there with the green onions. Um, another common ingredient, it seemed like, was sesame oil or sesame seeds. Uh, we just did not put that in there. Save a half a cup of that liquid for me. See how there's no sugars on the bottom? You just warmed it up just a touch. You don't need to boil it or anything like that. And now it's just getting each piece marinated. Sometimes people say do it overnight. Some people say two hours. We're gonna shoot for the four hour mark. All right, guys, we're back at it. It's been about six hours. As you can tell that the sun has changed on us very drastically. We typically don't film this late. Actually, nine times out of 10, I'm already asleep by this time. So this is what we got. And it's six o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. Uh, we got our marinated beef. Looks absolutely fantastic. Mm, I mean, just, it. I think it's spot on. This is where it switches up a little bit to each their own. I know that they use um, like a macaroni salad or potato salad, stuff like that. I've got white rice cooking right now, my rice cooker inside. Since we're watching our carbs, we're gonna do some fresh steamed broccoli. And since we're watching our carbs, <laughs> show you guys a little trick while we're at it. I like to teach you something every once in a while. Lightly coat your pineapple with some sugar. We're gonna caramelize that on the flat top. Remember that reserve liquid? I've got a half a cup right there. The meat will not take long, so I'm gonna start the uh, broccoli. So that was a half a cup of the marinade? Yes, reserved. A little bit of avocado oil, you can use butter. For my Camp Chef lovers out there, we're back at it. We got little Lucy out here. She's doing her thing. She's still here. She's still on. She's still cooking. She just hides over there in the corner sometimes. When you have three griddles, it's hard to <laughs> use them all. Honestly, sometimes it's about being lazy. You get a griddle out, you use it, and next thing you know, you use it like three or four days. It just happens. I love my uh, burger rub from... Uh, Pit Boss, it's just like an all-around encompassing normal. I like it. I think it's what, salt, pepper, and garlic, basically? I think it's butter. Butter, salt, and pepper. So good all-purpose seasoning. Yep. Hit that with a little water. And just dome it. Our flat top's all on low. We're going to cook everything on low. It's about building heat. Personally, without doing this recipe ever before, I think this is a crucial point no matter what you do in griddling. It's not shocking your griddle and taking all this meat and put it in one spot, right? Let each space have its own cooking area. It's going to caramelize more because of natural sugars and your temperature of your griddle is going to be able to recruit faster, which produces more caramelization, right? See the natural caramelization? A little help from that sugar. That's what we're looking for right there. The broccoli was done, already took it off. See how much temperature loss is on the griddle? I've tried from day one to teach you guys step by step, like tricks, tips, you name it. And we've got a video on like a uh, flat top grilling for beginners, This is or what temperature to cook on, right? And I express it all the time. We're not even at the boiling stage right now in some of this stuff. So you know it's gotta be well below the average temperature, right? That's why I say there's a lot of variables that go into it. So this is what we do. The easiest way to do it, to build your temperature back up, is scrape everything off of it. You're gonna allow this to build up more heat because it's gonna build up quicker because there's nothing on there. Then we'll rotate everything over and do the same thing on this side. All right, while this is building, we're almost there. I just did a test. Watch. We're getting close. While you move everything over, when you scrape it down, you're cleaning as you go. So now all of a sudden, you're not only are you 
how to clean your flat top grill, grilling for beginners, and what temperature to cook. We're doing it all in three videos, basically in three minutes. All right, you guys ready? See the sauce? See how much less liquid there is? Now we're starting to caramelize that sugar. That's what we're looking for. This is how you get that color. That right there. I like where we're at right there. Juicy, reduced. Well, we had to adjust a little bit. The sun is so bright, you couldn't see anything. So we moved everything back over. We repositioned, ready to go. Thing of note, look, I saved a half a cup because in my mind, I, if this was not strong enough, I'd planned on creating a, a thicker, um, like a slurry with cornstarch or just maybe just thicken it up on the flat top because all the sugars and then having to add it. But this beef is so juicy and so it just absorbed so much flavor. It does not need it. It is absolutely fan freaking tastic. Well, one thing I've learned about doing stuff like this, somebody's gonna comment that I absolutely ruined the dish and somebody's gonna comment that I hit a home run. That's just the nature of the beast. I hope that he actually watches this video and says, thank you very much. I tried my best to represent the wine culture, the people, and everything that we stand for. So with that being said. It's good. It's good. Just use your favorite white rice. I actually prefer jasmine rice, so that's what I went with. He said no garnish, unnecessary. Yeah, the broccoli probably is authentic, but we had to throw in a green vegetable. What a fantastic way to bring new ingredients into your repertoire. <laughs> that's one of those culinary English dictionary words right there. That's what happens when you've been cooking all day. All day. And it's 95 degrees outside. <laughs> All right, guys, there you go. It I absolutely is. love this. It's really good. Thanks for the rod. I really appreciate it. All right, let's get over some things. Find us on the Griddle Group. Make this. What are you guys making? What are your guys' experiences? How can we improve? How bad am I? The Griddle Group on Facebook. We have a join program if you guys want behind the scenes footage. Hey, that's always an option. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Aloha. If you immediately start cleaning your flat top grill after you get done with sugary stuff like hibachi, teppanaki, noodles, starches, whatever, look how much comes off. That's all the stuff that would be burned on your flat top grill while you're doing something else. That's how you, that's why you clean as you go. How you clean it after that's up to you. Isn't it true that getting all of those sugars off is a lot easier when your griddle's still warm? Yes.